Hello everyone and welcome to this video. So you've gone through the other three components for your A-level physics exam, P2, P4 and P5. So congratulations to you on getting this far. And now the only component remaining is P1, which is the MCQs paper. So a lot of you might know that the P1 uh, is for MCQs, right? So you have 40 MCQs. And this is actually one of the more difficult components of your of all the physics components. And the reason is this because you can get, for example, three marks for doing a question in paper two, but for the same question, and it can be the case that you have exactly the same question, but maybe just some values here and there may be a bit different. And then for that same question, you would be awarded just one mark in the MCQs, right? So some are difficult, some are easier, but most of the times the questions that are there are more difficult. So you have 40 MCQs, which you have to do in a time of one hour and 15 minutes, right? So 1.25 hours. So this is in contrast with what you had in pro levels where you had to do 40 MCQs and you were given one hour. Uh, but due to the added level of complexity, you have 15 minutes extra. So today uh, I'll be discussing some tips, uh, what, I used, uh, what I used personally as a student to score well in my P1s and other things which uh, are maybe a bit more personal, they depend on you. So we'll be going through some of those tips and then you can just uh, take your pick out of them, whatever you want to do. So the first tip that I want to give you guys, and obviously this sounds a bit cliche talking about MCQs and all, which is to read the question very carefully right because especially in physics you have a lot of information which is given out only in the form of words right so if i for example go on to discuss this so for example in questions related to kinematics or dynamics always look out for this phrase right rest means the speed is zero right or for example something like this so constant speed in this case so constant speed would mean acceleration is zero, right? And if you extrapolate this uh, conclusion to forces as well, right? So this means that the net force would also be zero. Right, so some small phrases like this here and there are like littered throughout the question and throughout all the uh, MCQs themselves. So do look out for uh, keywords like these, which can actually, and which are required for you to uh, find out the correct answer. And then the next one would be to go through the examiner reports for most of the papers, right? The reason that we as teachers and a lot of my fellow colleagues as well do not recommend reading the mark scheme is because the mark scheme primarily was never meant to be read by the student, right? So it was for teachers so the teachers could get an idea of how assessment actually occurs and then they can prepare students accordingly. The examiner report, on the other hand, not only does it have the mark scheme answers, uh, for P2, for example, there's a little less detail, not as much working shown, but for P1, obviously, you just have the answers written in both the mark scheme and the examiner reports. But if you go through the examiner reports for P1s, you will get quite a solid idea of what the examiner uh, tells about the questions and what are the types of questions that the student struggles with, right? So a great way to not make mistakes is to read about the mistakes of others and then try to avoid those, right? So do go through the uh, exam and reports, especially for the uh, recent years, as we've also been discussing in the live sessions, that the questions have now been slightly changed in pattern. So for example, when we were talking about the live sessions and I was talking about the question number one. So question number one is usually about physical quantities and for these types of questions, what the examiner writes is that the most of the candidates do not know what a physical quantity means. Right? So you need to uh, know uh, these sorts of things which are often overlooked by the candidates uh, who are preparing for the exams and then you need to not make those mistakes. Right? So other than this, Another piece of advice would be that for questions related to graphs and whatnot, always try to come up with a relationship. Right, and by a relationship, I simply mean an equation. Lincoln, 
those quantities. Right, and by those quantities, I mean the quantities on the x and y axis. So you always need to have a relationship instead of just uh, going through words. For example, if you're talking about, let's say, if I give you an example of this. So let's say I want you to draw a graph of kinetic energy. Right, so how does the kinetic energy change with the speed? Right, so if, for example, if someone is not drawing the graphs or does not have that good of math, uh, skills, then what they would say is all right, the velocity is increasing, so the kinetic energy must increase. And then they might have this sort of a naive uh, approach that they would say that this line should be something like this. When in fact, we know that this is a square relationship, right? So an increase in velocity increases the kinetic energy by even more. So also, let me just label this here. So this graph should actually be something like this, like an upward sloping curve. So things like these, you always need to come up with a relationship linking those quantities. Most of the uh, questions that are there in the MCQ paper, the students do not have that much trouble with, but the questions related to graphs are what the students struggle with the most. And this is not coming from me, this is from the examiner. Another thing, uh, if we stick to this theme of graphs, is whenever you get a graph yourself, right? So for example, if the examiner has drawn a graph for you, and if he's saying something about those graphs, or maybe you have to extract some data from that graph, always note the units and prefixes. Right? So always whenever we're talking about uh, uh, any sort of graph, always keep note of the units which are going to be used and the prefixes if those are applicable. And a small example would be this. So if we have a graph like this, so let's say that this is F, right? This is some force applied perpendicularly to a cross-sectional area. If this area is in millimeters square, and if this F is maybe in kilonewton, right? So you always need to take care of what are the quantities, right? So the quantities of force and area, if you maybe need to, uh, let's say, calculate the stress. So if the graph is a straight line like this, if you take this point, let's say that this point is six and 50, right? And if you want to calculate the stress at this certain value, so you use the formula for stress, right? So stress is force upon area. But whenever you're doing this, and this is also uh, somewhat linked to how alert you are in your paper, which, will, uh, which we'll be discussing in a few later points as well. So the force would need to be converted into the SI units, right? So whenever nothing has been specified by the examiner as to what units, has, uh, what units have to be used or in which unit the answer has to be given, always assume SI units, right? So kilo would have to be converted into simple newtons, right? So you get rid of the kilo by uh, making use of the 10 to the three, uh, 10 to the third prefix. And similarly, the area, so if the area is 50, right? So how do you convert mm squared to meter squared? So the simple idea is this, and this is what I've been using from my childhood and it's never failed me. So one millimeter is 10 to the negative three meters. Now you have millimeters square, so you would want to square both the sides, right? So this 10 to the negative three square come, becomes 10 to the negative six. And in this way, you calculate the stress, right? So always keep in mind what the prefixes are being used and uh, the SI units. Now, if we go on to another piece of advice here. So for graphs, uh, we've talked about the units, the prefixes, and coming up with a relation, uh, coming up with a relationship where you have to draw or choose a graph yourself. Obviously, it's P1, so you don't have to draw, you just have to choose from the options. So another one is this, that be doubtful if the question seems too easy. Right, there's a reason why I said that this is the most 
uh, if not the most and one of the most difficult uh, components in all of A-level physics, not just AS, both A-levels, uh, A so AS and A2. So many of the questions are phrased in a way that you fall into this trap of thinking, all right, so I'm done with the question. Let me just go ahead and tick off the correct option, right? So there's always some piece of information in the text there, uh, some sort of uh, pit that the examiner wants you to fall into and you have to precisely not do that, right? So uh, I don't have an example on hand uh, to show you this, but we've discussed this a lot in the live sessions. So always read the questions carefully. Also, this uh, links back with the very first piece of advice that we discussed. So if you read the question carefully, you won't be missing out on these key pieces of information, which are crucial to getting your answer correct. So if the question seems too easy, you might need to go back and check your working. Now, another uh, piece of advice would be this. So attempt the questions in the order specified. Right now, here there might be uh, some sort of a personal bias uh, here because I personally have never been a fan of uh, attempting the easier questions first and then the harder questions later because actually scientific research shows that for example if you're doing something if you're doing a list of tasks uh, you must first focus on the hardest task because that is the one which requires the most brain power right so it's just like a bitter pill to swallow you just have to do it and you just have to get done with it so if you just go in the order Right, so for example, if I just uh, roughly talk about the MCQs and the topics which appear, so maybe like one to five is kinematics and uh, physical measurements and quantities, right? So physical and kinematics, and then you have forces somewhere from five to 10. And in these forces, you have all the easier sorts of forces as well, Newton's laws, upthrust, all of that stuff, momentum, uh, and then from maybe 10 to 5, you have something like work energy power. Sorry, 10 to 15, you have work energy power. And then 15 to 20, again, this is just a rough estimate. Uh, this might be like deformation, all that stuff, Hooke's law and all. And then you have the uh, other questions like waves from 20 to 25. Actually, yeah, so maybe 20 to 25. And then you have some electricity questions Again, depends on the mood of the examiner, the topic which uh, he is more fascinated with at the moment of uh, making the paper. Those are the ones that you'll get more questions on, right? So maybe roughly saying that you have 10 questions on electricity and then the last five would be on nuclear physics, right? So the fundamental particles, all that stuff. So that would be nuclear physics. So. In my opinion, the most difficult questions are somewhere here in the forces and the work energy power part. Uh, so questions related to momentum, I was really scared of them as a student. Uh, so those, I, and those, in my opinion, are one of the most difficult questions that you can have. And then somewhere here, deformation is somewhat easier. Waves and electricity, uh, a lot of these questions also have uh, some specific part that you need to pick up on to get the correct answer right so just do it in this order uh this would be my personal advice right so nuclear physics is obviously one of the easier chapters of the entire es syllabus so it's like you kind of get the fruit for doing all these difficult questions first right or you can uh, choose to do the nuclear physics questions first this is kind of like the personal choice but i prefer to do it in this order Then the last piece of advice would be to leave an MCQ if it is taking up too much time. Right, so if you're talking about an MCQ, which uh, could be any of the topics, not the, not just the ones I pointed out, maybe the examiner is in a bit of a festive mood and then he gives a difficult MCQ in another paper, in another topic, right? So maybe something when there's uh, something about a question from deformation, which is really tricky, right? 
Uh, so chances are that you are not the only one who's finding that MCQ hard to solve. And this is like a ground reality. If you are facing problems with it, uh, assuming that you have an IQ greater than the average person, then most probably other people are also having uh, problems with it, right? So what you do, you do this, that you skip this and then you come back to it later, right? Just for one MCQ, for one mark out of those 40, don't take up uh, chunks of your time from that were meant for the other MCQs and then you will end up kind of uh, this effect of this different MCQ is going to ripple out into the other questions, right? And then that's going to be a problem. So if you feel like this uh, MCQ is really difficult, you've never seen anything like this before, just leave it, go on, do the entire paper and then come back to it later, right? And Worst case scenario, if you are still not able to do it, then just guess and uh, shade that box and move on. The last piece of advice would be this. And I'm, and I'm not joking when I say this. So get good sleep before taking up this MCQ paper. In my opinion, this requires a lot of uh, also a lot of luck in a way and also being able to spot the right cues which are given by the examiner right so if you just pick up one uh, what the examiner has told you some keywords here and there uh, the phrases which i talked about so if you get good sleep if you have an active mind before going into the paper in my opinion if you get a good seven eight hours of sleep before the paper that beats uh having a three extra hours of study and then being really done in the paper right you don't know what's going on you aren't reading through the question properly you aren't picking up on the hands you aren't looking at the axis carefully and then that can be a problem so do this well before the p1s if you still have some problems then here's what my checklist would be so let's say you start doing any of the yearly past papers. Let's say you get stuck in that question. All right, fair enough. This is pretty normal. And then you do another past paper and then you get stuck on the same uh, topic and this a uh, question from that same topic. All right, this may also be normal. And then if you go on to another one and if you get stuck at the same topic, then this means that probably you don't have uh, that your preparation for that topic is lacking a little. Right, so what I would do is I would go through the theory and go through the concepts. For example, if there is some certain concept that I'm having trouble with, I would go through that, I would revise that. And then I would go on to topical questions. And if I feel like, all right, with the topical questions, I've been performing well enough. And then I would go back to the yearly past papers. At this moment in time, I would strongly suggest against solely practicing the topical past papers, right? Uh, with MCQs, time is a huge factor. Right. So let me just make this a good even 10 by saying this, note the time. For the paper. Right. So do take note of the time where a stop, uh, where a wristwatch if you want. If it doesn't feel comfortable on you, just get a good angle on the watch, a good angle on the clock in your exam mode. And if it's not possible, then just ask the uh, just ask the invigilator to tell you the time, right? So do take care of the time. Time runs out very, very fast in MCQ papers. You might be thinking that from four levels, I have 15 minutes more, but the questions are three or four times as hard, right? So it's not like a linear process. So that's it from my side and again if you have any questions do let us know on the platform we have support available all the time just for you guys and also be sure to at attend the latest uh, p1 sessions in which we'll be solving papers from the uh, 2022 session as well as the 2021 right so that will be uh, a great way for you to check exactly where you stand so best of luck for your exams and see you then bye